Hello, I'm glad to be here with you all to talk about Cisco Secure X. Uh, I'm Jamie Heary. I'm a global chief security architect at Cisco, and I focus on all things architecture, integration, and multi-domain, multi-platform within the Cisco portfolio and third parties. So CISOs want a clear path uh, to deliver three simple things. First is simplify everything for me, please. I need the experience to be simplified across all of the point products, as well as the integration inside of the platform. I need you to help me accelerate my success, especially as it pertains to moving to the cloud. And then future protected, help me get to that zero trust, ubiquitous, least privileged access control world that we all strive for, which has a very narrow scope um, of the attack surface. And it really gets down to only allowing those that need access to have access. The security industry is it's more complex than ever. I mean, here's some interesting statistics. 57% um, of our uh, security teams have a time to detect KPI. 81% of uh, organizations report that orchestration between just even two products is incredibly challenging for them. When they have a bunch of point products, getting them to work together is usually uh, fraught with failure. And then finally, 77%. And that's the amount of customers that have a plan to automate more actions. They want to use automation as a path to simplicity and orchestration more than ever. The platform approach that we're taking at Cisco through SecureX tackles these issues. It tackles the most pressing security operations challenges around how do I drive simplicity throughout the whole organization? How do I increase my visibility and which will then accelerate my time to detection, investigation, and then how do I very quickly and efficiently remediate what I do find? I don't want to be um, investigating for weeks and then after I find something, I don't want it to have to take another few weeks to properly remediate that scope. We have been building a platform over quite a bit of time, as you can see here, going all the way back to, to 2007. Now, we could have gone further even back than that if we wanted. But we stopped there and kind of went forward to show you it takes a while to build all of the components of a platform. Nobody else in the industry has the breadth and the depth of a portfolio that we brought together and integrated into the SecureX platform. Everywhere from network access control, identity services engine, next-gen firewall, cloud security through um, umbrella and secure internet gateway, SD-WAN, our whole networking, switching, routing, wireless portfolio, um, CASB, our cloud services, Tetration on the endpoints, just a whole portfolio that allows us to integrate that in such a way that's really never been done before. If you take a look at this broad portfolio, I'd like to break it up into network, user endpoint, cloud edge, and then application. In the network side, that's where you'll see like firewall and IPS, uh, table stakes technologies here, as well as more emerging technologies like traffic analysis, traffic analytics, how do I do a behavior-based approach to finding threats on the network, looking at flow data, packet data, and behavior data along those lines? In the user and endpoint, we have a best-of-breed endpoint protection that provides antivirus, anti-malware, and the full EDR uh, aspect of, of protection, including things like we offer multi-factor authentication through uh, acquisition of Duo. Our Duo solution provides you multi-factor authentication as well as uh, embedded um, context awareness to that authentication. So you can figure out the posture uh, of a device as well as the authenticity and the authentication of the user that's using that device. On the Cloud Edge, uh, we spent a lot of time and effort in R&D 
uh, and multiple releases to get to where we are today with a very robust SASE solution and in underneath the umbrella uh, portfolio. And then finally, application security. Diving deep into the applications, the security that is around them, the operating systems that they run on, the containerized approach that's so prevalent today, and then also the cloud platforms that a lot of those applications run on. We need to be able to protect the whole gamut. And we wrap all of this, the whole portfolio, with our best of breed industry leading Talos Threat Intelligence. So introducing SecureX, like what is this thing? Well, first of all, it's a cloud native built-in platform. It is taking our whole ex portfolio that we just went through, which is up on the upper left, and integrating it together in a way that's never been done before. But we can't stop there. That's not good enough just to have Cisco on Cisco, if you will. We need the uh, that portfolio, that platform rather, to work with all of your third parties, your existing investments. We understand that you are on a security journey and it won't be all Cisco. So we need to play ball with all of our third parties, um, some of our partners and even our competitors. And you see that on the right. And down below, SecureX is built for multiple personas. It's heavily weighted into SecOps, but it also has IT ops and NetOps capabilities and we'll go through some of those throughout. As part of that move to the cloud and that SecureX platform vision, we have our SASE vision. So with SASE, we bring in the SecureX platform as well as the capability set that we built over the years on the right-hand side. We have all the parts and pieces needed in order to put together the best SASE position solution in the world. SASE, of course, stands for Secure Access Service Edge. It's all about moving what used to be perimeter-based on-premise security solutions, taking them, enhancing them, and moving them into the cloud. So now we can run at cloud speed. Think of all of your branches. Instead of having a very heavy security uh, stack at the branch physically, move that into the cloud. Now you have common policy across all of your branches from a central point, a central choke point in the Cisco SASE cloud. It's all powered by Cisco Umbrella and our networking portfolio, specifically our SD-WAN portfolio. That allows us to help you transition to a cloud-first security model. And here's one example of what we can offer today. You have Cisco SD-WAN at the bottom here that integrates and automates into Cisco Umbrella. Inside of Umbrella, it provides DNS layer protection, secure web gateway with URL filtering, uh, cloud-delivered firewalling, CASB, and of course, Talos threat intelligence throughout all of it. That SD-WAN has, has integration options that allow you to automate the deployment of this in such a way that you can literally set up hundreds of branches to connect up to Umbrella in mere minutes. So our portfolio includes XDR capabilities and beyond those, I would argue. So I wanted to make sure that we cover SOAR and XDR technology and really where SecureX fits in this paradigm. So here you can see that on the left-hand side, there's SOAR capabilities such as, hey, I need API-based integration. I want a simplified policy. I need to automate this process. XDR looks at it a little bit differently and says, I need cross product integration, especially as it pertains to endpoint. I want to simplify the analytics and the response uh, procedures. SecureX offers all of that. We get the simplified experience, as you can see on the right, the unified visibility and the operational efficiency that's so common with deploying both a SOAR and an XDR solution, with SecureX, we give you both. If you already have a SOAR or an XDR, that's fine too. We can integrate with them. So we can run a playbook in SecureX that launches a playbook in a SOAR tool and vice versa. They could run one of our playbooks as part of a response. 
But the neat thing about SecureX is there's no additional charge for any of this. All you have to do is buy one Cisco security product and you get the SecureX platform at no additional charge. So you're already entitled to it if you have any Cisco security product uh, in your repertoire right now. And I encourage you to go to the securex.cisco.com website and enable it. It's super simple. It's very easy to set up. No special skills. There's no data storage that's happening that you have to pay for or deal with. So let's take a look at SecureX from a value perspective. It is included, as I mentioned, with every product. It literally takes 15 minutes not to add just one product into SecureX, but multiple. Um, it's a very quick API key exchange that the solution runs you through exactly how to do it with either a Cisco product or third party products. And our customers are saying that in half the time they're able to visualize threats to scope those threats better than they ever have before. And I'll show you some of that. I'll demonstrate that some for, for you later. Save hundreds of hours by doing this unified uh, visibility and then also bringing in that automated workloads to be able to run essentially any job uh, that you can dream up through programmability and automation inside of the SecureX SOAR platform. This ends up with a, a maximized operational efficiency we're looking at about an 85% reduction in the time to respond and remediate versus not having a platform like SecureX. As I mentioned, it is cloud native. The integrations for all of the Cisco platforms, they're built right in. You don't have to figure it out yourself. It's very easy to onboard. We have a concept of a ribbon and single sign-on throughout. A ribbon is simply a browser-like plugin uh, that allows you to navigate wherever you want to. It's always there. So you don't leave, you don't lose your context as you navigate uh, between systems. It has a dashboard, uh, threat response, and an orchestration tool that we're going to get into in a lot of detail. So what does it look like to investigate things with SecureX? So SecureX has a capability called threat response. And its job in life is to take a bunch of intelligence, inject it into the platform. And this intelligence would come from Cisco security products like AMP and ThreatGrid and Umbrella Investigate, our Talos team, of course, and third-party threat intelligence feeds as well. We combine that with local security context. What I mean by that is we can say, have any of these solutions that are integrated with the platform have you seen this observable before? An observable might be an IP address, a file name, a hash, could be a domain name. And we'll literally go through each one of those solutions and ask them those questions to get the context we need. Once we then put together that picture and that scope, there's a bunch of response actions you can take. And they're a single click away, blocking the files, blocking uh, the destinations, isolating those hosts so that they're off into quarantine and we can fix them up and patch them. So what does a unified visibility look like? A lot of us deal with the swivel chair problem, as I like to call it. We have lots of different products. We have lots of different portals into those products. And we have lots of different visibility screens, if you will, that we could go to within those products. That takes time, effort, knowledge, and training to do that. And we don't have any of those to spare these days. So with SecureX, you'll have a common dashboard where you can see the top metrics from all of the Cisco solutions that are embedded inside of the platform. So from one place, you can see all of the, the attacks that have been detected, the command and control traffic, uh, the email phishing attack, you get the idea. It'll be a single place to see how your environment's doing. Literally in minutes, we can see and stop attacks with just a few clicks. The ability to remediate is always just one or two clicks away from wherever you are on the SecureX platform, which makes it really nice that once you come to a decision that this is something bad and want to stop it, you literally have to one or two clicks away and you're gonna be able to stop it. 
usually not just for that particular victim, but a shields up for all potential victims that might be able to interact with that malicious artifact, whether it's a file, a domain, etc. With this simplicity, if you take a look at the before, so we actually did a, a timed exercise several times um, that said, how long would it take me to start with an indication of compromise or an alert and run it through all the way to remediation using a point product approach? It averaged about 32 minutes across multiple different vendors. And this results from a couple things, one of which is when you're doing that investigation, you have to go to multiple consoles and they don't talk to each other. So you're literally cutting and pasting observables and information into these products and then figuring out what they know about that observable. So I have this file hash. Uh, go to the endpoint. Have you ever seen this on the endpoint? Go to the next gen firewall. Have you seen this and who have you seen it from? And every time you're getting more data back. Yes, I have seen it on these two IPs. Well, now I got to go investigate those IP addresses. Let me go back through all those consoles. Could have 8, 10, 12 of these things and have to do that all over again with these new IP addresses the firewall told me about. We automate all of that for you. We automatically go out and figure out what is relevant, what is real, and what does everybody know about these observables so that I can put the story together literally on a map like you see on the right-hand side. For maximizing operational efficiency using automation, we have embedded in the platform a whole orchestration um, uh, solution set. Think SOAR technology. So all those repetitive tasks, those human powered tasks that you just wanna get rid of and automate, we'll do that for you. So the solution here is the orchestration built into the platform that allows you to interact with not just Cisco technology, but also third party technology. And after you do that, you can combine these tasks. In this example, we're taking nine tasks across three different security tools two infrastructure systems, and three different teams in a single keystroke. So this platform experience is built on this breadth of technology to improve ultimately your threat efficacy. We find that 76% of organizations that are using our Cisco email security also get huge benefits out of SecureX threat response during an investigation. We also find that 83% of organizations that are looking at how to remediate threats faster, when they use SecureX, they get that result. Inside of endpoint security uh, with, with SecureX, our endpoint technology, including our Cisco AMP technology, it's able to share all the details that it knows about the endpoints that it's residing on with the rest of the platform. Things like the operating system, the applications that are running, the processes that are there, the IP addresses that it's interacting with and listening to. That enhances both the endpoint itself, makes it a more powerful endpoint when you enter it in the platform. And it also enhances the abilities of all of the other things that are in the platform. They now have access to that context from the endpoints. Same thing is true with email. One of the neat things about this integration is you can dive into a threat. You're doing the incident and you find out that's a bad piece of malware. You track it down to the hash of the malware, let's say. You can then track that hash all the way down to the email that it was attached to in a particular attack. Or maybe it wasn't in the email attachment, maybe it was in a phishing attack link that linked to a malicious website that hosted that bad uh, file. We'll tell you that whole story, right down to who that phishing attack was delivered to, uh, what the exact email was, what the body of it was, the link that it went to will link to that, uh, that IP address, will give you a full threat vector uh, analysis of that workload at the email or at that IP address. The whole thing comes together. And again, network security. If I can take that next gen firewall 
platform, enhance it with the SecureX uh, built-in platform, it allows me to unleash both network awareness and traffic analytics and alerts that we're getting from the next-gen firewall, but also help the firewall scope that intrusion. So the firewall usually only knows about the world it, it sees, which is just the in and out packets that it can see. It doesn't have visibility to the back end part uh, of, of your network. All the other things in the platform do, like endpoint, like email. So when you find a threat or a threat gets reported from the network security devices, you can enhance that with the visibility across all of the platform integrations. So without further ado, let's get into a demo and I wanna show this to you in action. Okay, so here is SecureX. We logged in here and the first thing you see is the dashboard. So the dashboard, I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. On the left hand side are all the applications that you have integrated inside of the platform. So we can see we have threat response, AMP for endpoints, email, firepower, some third parties like Google and Shodan, uh, email, Stealthwatch, Tetration, over a dozen integrations inside of my platform. Uh, and there is more, so you can add in even more, and that's down here in the available integrations. It's really easy to add additional ones. So if I wanted to add in another AMP for Endpoints instance, I could come in here, and it's super simple. On the right-hand side, it tells you exactly where to go in that third-party or Cisco tool. You pick the URL, who do I talk to, um, what is my client ID, and what's my API key. Everything in SecureX platform is API-based, which makes it really easy to set it up and why we can get you know, 15 minutes uh, of time is all it takes to integrate multiple uh, plat products into the platform. All of them are like that. So if I go to available integrations, uh, maybe I'll pick a, a third party one here. Have I been pwned? Same idea. What's the URL? Who, where's the API live? What's the bearer, the authorization bearer or the key? And I'm off and running. All the hard work of the integration and programming, et cetera, is done by the platform uh, from then on. So let's go back to our dashboard and let's take a look at the middle part, which is where all the action is. That's our, our dashboards that we have with our analytics and our statistics, uh, visibility, and we call these things tiles. So here's a tile that shows the MITRE attack tactics that have been detected by our AMP for endpoints uh, solution over the last seven days. So I can go through here and I can say, I have four hosts that have seen command and control tactics. So I can click on that and it will cross launch me single signed into AMP for endpoints and then bring me to exactly you know, where I need to be. So here are the compromises that have been observed um, across the gamut. When I look into any one of these, I can very quickly get to the meat of it, like what, what has happened, uh, and any that require attention are just one click away, and I can now see that these particular hosts here um, have, been, um, have been targeted. Going back into our dashboard, there are lots of dashboards that we can interact with. Here's some firepower, top, top intrusion targets, Click on these and go right to those incidents or those events. Uh, I have uh, some private intelligence feeds here. I have AMP for endpoints. Uh, as I scroll down, firepower, orbital. Uh, I can even see things like inventory uh, and health uh, of the different solutions uh, and their respective tiles. So this is one place to go uh, to get this type of information. I mean, picture it without a SecureX dashboard. The experience is much different. You would have to log into all of these disparate products. You'd have to sign in, you have to navigate and know where to navigate to. So the knowledge base goes way up, the knowledge level required. And then you'd have to navigate to, to where these are. And you'd have to do that repetitively across every product you have 
And in a lot of cases, these dashboards, they're not found on the same page within that product. So you'd literally be searching and hunting in multiple places within uh, that those point products. Here we bring them all together for you. On the right hand side is the news feed with up to date information uh, from us and from uh, th from third parties like uh, US CERT. All right, well, let's take a look at this next piece. It's really critical to be able to navigate around the platform without getting lost and without get, losing your context. Uh, one of the things that helps us do that is called the ribbon. It's at the bottom of the page here. So from here, I can see a couple things right off the bat. I can see I have an open case um, called um, uh, Invoice ID Malware Case New York Campus. It shows me there's some observables in here, some notes in here of the current open case I'm working on. Incidents, very similar. I have an open incident right now, uh, malware event, invoice ID due, etc. It's got one target, five observables. And then from here, I can also see any orbital queries that I have running uh, out to gather information uh, actively from different hosts. Think orbital is like OS query on, on steroids. I can also use the ribbon to just type in observables that I might want to know more about. So if I have an IP address, I can just type it in here, does a lookup uh, on that observable. This one comes back malicious and I can either add it to my case or investigate it in threat response. And I'll show you what that is here in a second. I can also scrub the page for observables from here. I can say find observables on page and it will go through this page, whatever page I'm on, and pull off all the observables and, and allow me to investigate those. When I open up the ribbon into its maximized mode, this is where uh, I can see uh, all of the concepts of the ribbon, that casebook, incidents, orbital, etc. cetera, uh, my applications that are connected here. Here's a sampling of the ones I have, and I can launch single sign-on experience right into each one of these uh, as well. So I'm gonna go to incidents. It shows me that I have five incidents that have been assigned to me, um, and they kind of run the gamut of the ones I've done. Uh, down below, I have a bunch of other incidents that have been assigned to other people uh, or are available um, to, uh, to work on. So let's grab this invoice ID one. And inside of there, it tells me a summary, uh, what the urgency is, who reported it, in this case, a next-gen firewall, and a bit about the event details. On the targets, it shows me that there's one target that's part of this uh, particular malware event. All the observables, in this case, there's five different observables. One has been convicted. This SHA has been known malicious. So from here, one click away, I can bring up a menu. We call it the pivot menu. And I can either add this to um, AMP for endpoints as a, a known bad SHA. It's already there, so I, I don't have to do that. You can see I could remove it, though, if it was a false positive. Or I can run any kind of a workload to do stuff, like triage computers um, that, that have this particular SHA. There's a timeline and a sightings and then linked references. One of the linked references, which is cool, is snapshots. You can save your place in an investigation. So I'm going to open up this investigation. It's now going out to um, all of the dozen plus uh, modules and solutions I have integrated and taking these five observables that were part of that incident and adding it to a threat response. So of all of those uh, five observables, it asked those dozen products and of the 12, eight of them came back with something interesting to say about them. So AMP came back with 307 sightings uh, Firepower had a lot to say, 261 sightings, some private intelligence, Stealth Watch, AMP Global Intel, Umbrella, just the whole gamut. I mean, think about that happening in, in a world without Secure X. You have a dozen different point products. You have that, just these five observables that you want to know about. Are they relevant to anything broader than the one incident that I saw? And how would you get that done? And how long would it take you to get that done? What's the level uh, of the investigator have to be at to understand how to use 12 different products to begin with? Here, it's all automated. It came back and it said, 
Sorry, you don't have just one target. When we did the research across your portfolio and your platform, 13 targets came back uh, actually uh, as a part of this, uh, this investigation uh, and interacting with these bad observables. It's shown down in this, uh, one of my favorite parts here is this, this graph down below, which we call the relations graph. So let me zoom in here a little bit and I can show you that here is one of the Shaw malicious files that we identified as part of our observables. And you can see that by the magnifying glass. Magnifying glass means you gave me this to go look up. But look at all the other things on this graph that we identified as part of the attack. So here's a malicious Shaw. We didn't give it this one. It automatically found it through its investigation and said, hey, this host was targeted by this Shaw, but it also went and downloaded this Shaw. So you can start to put together the picture of what happened. And it wasn't just one host, it was all of these hosts. Um, and some of them uh, are even related to each other. So now you can see it propagating throughout um, uh, your network. Here we can see that there's uh, some of these folks were targeted by this Shaw. So when you hover over it, it says, these hosts were targeted, so that's self-propagation of that malware. Uh, and I can also see uh, additional uh, malware. If I want to dive into this or stop this, I can hover over any one of these particular pieces of malware. I can open them up, and I have that pivot menu. So if I want to block it and for endpoints, I can quickly add that SHA uh, to my detections, and it will go out in all AMP for endpoints uh, are now uh, protected uh, against this particular um, uh, observable and this particular malicious uh, hash. If I look at uh, some of the other things, as part of this was a, was a malicious domain. And that malicious domain, I can also look that up from an umbrella perspective and uh, inside of here, and I can block it in umbrella with one click. So now that malicious domain is off limits to anybody in my organization uh, that's protected underneath umbrella, which, you know, that could be all sorts of people, people on my local network, people remotely working from home, uh, people on VPN, uh, and people over at Starbucks and off net completely. So for any one of these, I have environmental sightings, tells me I have 318 sightings in my environment. Globally, all of Talos has only seen 786 of these things happen. So this is a pretty targeted attack, potentially made just for me. And all of the different observables down here have a lot of information uh, that, uh, that you can glean from them uh, across uh, all the, of the different judgments, verdicts, sightings, and indicators uh, that are available to us. All right, so that's one way that you can go from a, a single incident. So let me bring up the ribbon again. Um, we started with a single target. Once we ran through um, the uh, threat response on that, we quickly determined that there was 13 targets. We blocked those, we did the shields up. Now I can change the status on this to closed. Um, if I wanted to, I could uh, always at any time add and remove users into this, um, this incident investigation with me. All right, so uh, with that, I wanted to uh, pivot over to another pretty uh, exciting part of SecureX, uh, and that is our ability to do orchestrations. So let's open up uh, SecureX orchestration. And we have a concept of workflows. Think of workflows as the same thing as playbooks. So playbooks allow us to do um, automated jobs, automated activities uh, throughout um, anything that attaches into your, your platform. That would include Cisco stuff as well as uh, a third party stuff. So I'm gonna sort these particular workflows. And I want to show you a couple of them. So maybe we'll show you isolate the host. Pretty simple um, uh, isolation of a host. It uses AMP. It goes out, creates a filter in AMP. It automatically isolates the host through the uh, APIs. Um, and then it can open up a WebEx Teams room and post into that Teams room what happened. So that Teams room would be one that you're your SOC uses that they collaborate on inside of WebEx Teams. And I would post all the detail of what happened 
uh, throughout this workflow. This is the host that got isolated. This is who ran the job to do so. Um, it was at this time, here's all the observables, just all sorts of good stuff um, that people can use. That's just one example of what we could do. We can open up a ServiceNow ticket. Uh, we could um, open up a case book. On the left-hand side are all of the embedded, uh, you know, right out of the gate um, systems that we can interact with. So here's AWS, uh, AppD, ACI, um, DNA Center. Of course, our whole security portfolio is going to be listed inside of here. Um, Cisco Titration, Threat Response, etc. And as I scroll down uh, even more, you have Meraki, you have Microsoft Azure Cloud, uh, OpenStack, Python, just a, a bunch of uh, Cisco and third party um, things that are available to you. In order to create these workflows, it's a no or low code experience. So if I want to submit um, the URL over to ThreatGrid as part of this job, I literally drag and drop it into the workflow. And then I just fill out um, the, uh, the necessary um, variables here uh, and I'm off and running. For all of the workflows um, that are, you see here, some of them come right out of the gate. Some of them are driven by the community and you can share these workflows. You can import them and export them. Uh, you can create your own new ones. Uh, and of course, we're gonna continue to add more to the, to the system right out of the box. All right, well, that was a quick whirlwind tour throughout SecureX. So once you get SecureX deployed, there is many things that your team is now gonna be able to do they couldn't do before. Like answer questions about observables. Hey, is this file malicious? If it is malicious, who's interacting with it? Can I quickly block and unblock everything from files, domains, IP addresses across the whole platform and all of the products that are integrated into it. I need to be able to isolate hosts. I got a, a platform now that I can proactively hunt based on these observables. So maybe those observables are coming from a blog post uh, that's out there and telling me about the latest and greatest threat. I wanna take that blog post and all of its information and ask my system, SecureX, am I vulnerable? Am I infected? Also, you along the way saw that we can document through stuff through casebook and integrations and incidents, snapshots, and collaborate with my team, both through the SecureX system and also through uh, other third-party tools like uh, ServiceNow or WebEx Teams, and then the ability to investigate all of this in one place uh, across over a dozen different products, Cisco and third-party uh, as you saw uh, in that whirlwind tour. So that brings us to meaningful integrations with your investments. As we've said repeatedly, this is more than just a Cisco specific and centric tool. The SecureX platform relies on third party integration in both third party operational tools, intelligence sources, infrastructure and visibility, as well as third party infrastructure from an IT service management. Um, what about cloud and virtual systems? What about uh, network systems, DevOps platforms? All of that, you can see some of the snapshot of the third-party vendors that we support today right out of the box uh, in our integrated platform. Everything from uh, things like VirusTotal, Google Safe Browsing for those intelligence sources, uh, stuff from IBM as well, uh, all the way to that more IT service management platforms the ServiceNow, um, SIM tools like Splunk, um, and, and also um, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, uh, major cloud providers. SecureX seamlessly integrates into your SOC. That's the whole point of SecureX is to make it a part and parcel of the workflow uh, within your, your security analyst teams. Uh, on the left, you have your environment, which will include you know, our stuff, our security portfolio, uh, third parties, our infrastructure, so routing, switching, wireless, uh, third party infrastructure, et cetera. All of that integrated into um, your SOC and SecureX will become a big piece of how your SOC operates, uh, both through the, the dashboard for the visibility, um, the ribbon for that threat investigation experience, 
And then if you have um, SIM and SOAR tools, uh, you can integrate those as well with SecureX and highly encourage you to, to inject third-party threat feeds and security feeds as, as well. So I wanna show you a demo here of how some of that integration can happen uh, within your SOC automatically alerts you to when new threats happen. Okay, so here's the, the challenge that we're up against. There are so many new vulnerabilities that happen. Um, there's a lot of different great security blogs out there that tell us about them. They give us instructions on how to search for them actively and threat hunt in our own organization to understand if we're both vulnerable and maybe even infected. Talos, as you're seeing here, that's one of uh, their jobs in life is to write the blog on, on this information about what is the latest and greatest threat and how can we help you uh, find that. It's usually in the order of uh, displaying indications of compromise and such. But this is a really manual process. You have to go through and read all these things. You might not get, get it to it for a couple of weeks. Um, there's probably uh, several different blogs that you wanna read every day. Uh, and then it takes you time to go through the, the information to, to pull out you know, what are the things I need to go check for that would tell me whether I'm infected or not. It can take literally many people, many days uh, just to keep up with this, and it's a constant battle. So what we wanna do is say, SecureX, automate this whole thing for me. You read the blogs for me. You go through the blogs and pull out all the observables. You go ask all my platform uh, integrated solutions, like my firewall and my uh, anti-malware and my email systems, Ask them whether I'm vulnerable or not. And if I am, I want you to automatically alert me. Open up a case for me. Dump all the detail in that case um, for me. And then I'll go investigate it and take action. So how do we do that? Well, we use SecureX uh, orchestration. All right, let's get into the demo. So here is the vulnerability feed. There's lots of uh, uh, data here from Talos. And I want to go and extract all that goodness using an orchestration workflow. Once I've run the workflow, it will then create the, a case for me when it finds something that is on my network. So here I see a case says, uh, in the upper left there, it's high priority from the Talos RSS feed and it's a ProMetal botnet blog. It puts all of the observables that are from that blog, it verdicts them as well, so you know which ones are malicious, uh, automatically and it adds in the note section detail from the automation that happened that this was auto generated from an orchestration job and some of the detail to the exact blog post uh, that generated this case book I mean, how cool is this it's going from a whole rss feed going through it in literally minutes automated opening up cases only for the ones that are on my network that that uh, the 12 products here are, are uh, seeing or reporting. So I can go through this in a bit of detail. Now I'm gonna investigate this to make sure that it, it is indeed real. Uh, it's taking those 32 observables and asking a dozen different products, what do you know about them? Seven came back and said, I know interesting things about them. It draws the threat picture for me in this relations graph. And I can see the malicious URLs, the malicious domains, who's connected to them in my environment. Here's four targets that happen to be infected with this particular malware. Um, it tells me uh, exactly uh, where they are, who's logged into them. Uh, it, all of the, the observables are flushed out for me so that I can see the verdicts, the judgments, the sightings. Uh, within um, not just one product, but every product that is part of uh, that is part of the uh, the platform here. In this case, seven of them are coming back with interesting information. We have AMP and Talos, Umbrella, Stealthwatch, some private intelligence, Firepower, all working together to paint this picture that would take us, if we had to do it manually, literally hours and very high skill level in order to put this picture as simple as it shows here uh, together for us. So huge time saver, um, lots of great data that's embedded inside of here that um, would take literally man hours to get manually. And the best thing is I can isolate this right 
from here with one click. So here I have uh, my, my host, my, one of my targets. I want to go in here and I want to say, take a forensic snapshot and isolate this host. It'll go off and do that using AMP Orbital and give me that forensic snapshot uh, and then isolate that host into quarantine. Now, last thing I want to do is save all my work so that it's cataloged, it's part of my case. Uh, I took a snapshot or I'm taking one right here. Um, I can even assign it to people uh, and it'll become, uh, you know, an artifact of the investigation uh, that I can, uh, I can share with my brethren on my team. I can share it with um, uh, investigators uh, as, as we need to. And last thing I want to do is hook it all together to the incident. So the casebook, the incident, and all the users that are involved uh, in the investigation are all linked up together. So there we go. So to help you get the most benefit out of SecureX, uh, all the platform integrations, both Cisco and third party, uh, we do have uh, a bunch of services to go along with it that are available. Uh, we call our services team Cisco CX, and they have three specific ones I wanted to point out here. One is helping you with automated orchestration, building those workflows, those playbooks, in such a way that you can orchestrate and automate tasks that are just mundane, you wanna get rid of, um, and then really help you quickly accelerate um, the uh, efficiency of your security analyst group. The next one is SOC enablement, and this involves integrating SecureX into your SOC while also benchmarking it against your operational processes. So how could SecureX most effectively integrate with your existing operations? Uh, that's what the, this uh, body of work here in this service will do. And then the last one is all around incident response. So if the day does come when you have a breach, um, the Talos incident response will help you uh, respond to that incident. Uh, they've dealt with some of the largest breaches in the world um, very effectively, help you quickly contain it, scope it, have the chain of custody of evidence and be able to be with you through the whole process. If you don't have um, a breach, which would be great, um, you can use this service to plan uh, for incident response, tabletop exercises, a whole preparedness plan. If you have one, a plan already, they'll take a look at it and provide you uh, recommendations and best practices. To maximize your security investment, uh, with Cisco, we have two buying programs. There's one that's an all-in enterprise agreement. It's an all-you-can-eat across our whole security portfolio. And the other one is a choice uh, agreement, which means you get all you can eat, but only for certain products. So maybe you just want to have email security, AMP for endpoints, and umbrella for 5,000 users we can st stagger it that way. So both of these help you get into um, the platform at a much more reasonable cost. Um, it provides a, a big compelling uh, reason financially uh, in order to do these multi-year uh, buying vehicles. So to wrap up here, this is a proven platform. We have over 9,000 customers that have been unlocking value with SecureX threat response. Um, some of the stats here that 98% of them found a unified view enables them to have that more rapid threat response. 95% of them came back and said, hey, this helps me take action, remediate quickly. I mean, these are super high numbers for any product. With that, I'll close it out with a big thank you. Thank you and happy threat hunting.